In this video, we're going to discuss how the mitochondrion is adapted to the functions it has to perform in cell respiration. So here's a 3D image of mitochondrion, but let's also draw out a 2D image. So a mitochondrion has these membranes, which uh, there's both an inner and an outer, outer membrane space. It has this region in the middle, which is what we call the matrix. And we have the region in between the membranes, which is what we call the inter-mitochondrial membrane space. Inter-membrane space. Right, so also what we what we've written out here, okay, and um, and the inner mitochondrial membrane is folded into these structures which we call Christi, right? These these little folds. So those all there were different parts to it. So how is the outer membrane adapted to the function of the mitochondria? Well, the outer membrane, first of all, is protecting the mitochondrion from the rest of the cell, right? In compartmentalization, which we talked about in, in when we talked about eukaryotes versus prokaryotes. And we have to be able to section off parts of the cell and the outer membrane is responsible for doing that. So it kind of maintains the conditions inside a mitochondrion. It will also create together with the inner membrane, the intermembrane space, right? So that's kind of another side function. And the inner membrane contains all the proteins for the electron transport chain, as well as ATP synthase, right? So the, the, that's essential for oxidative phosphorylation, right? So those are all found in the inner membrane. So that's how that's adapted. And this inner membrane is enfolded into these structures, which we call Christi. And uh, the reason why the folds are adapted to the function is because it increases the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, so it increases the surface area to volume ratio. Now, why is this good? Well, it means that you can have a lot more electron transport chains and ATP synthase, right? Because if you have more surface area of membrane, well, then you're just going to have more of these proteins. And we then already talked about the intermembrane space, right? But a specific adaptation is that this membrane space has very little volume. Now, why is this good? Well, part of the function of the membrane space is to be able to generate a proton gradient really quickly in the electron transport chain, right? So that it can then do chemiosmosis through ATP synthase. And um, the, if this volume were really big, it would take a lot of protons to generate a high concentration. But since it's a small volume, this can build up quite quickly. And then finally, the matrix that we talked about, it contains all the enzymes and the, the ideal pH necessary for both the Krebs cycle, but also for the link reaction. And if we were to look at a uh, uh, mitochondrion using this process known as electron tomography, which is basically where you produce like a 3D image from, um, from a, a small structure, it would have something that looks kind of like that. So you have to uh, be able to understand that a mitochondrion is obviously 3D, even though we always draw it in 2D and you look at images in 2D, the 3D structure is uh, kind of gives a lot of weight. And so all these folds in here, these are the Christi, right? And they kind of fold into the middle of the mitochondrial membrane. And that's electron tomography. So it's just an image that you have to kind of have seen once and then maybe it could come up on an exam and you could talk about the Christi or something like that. So the key points to take from this video is that uh, the mitochondria has two membranes, which then gives rise to both the intermitochondrial membrane space and the Christi. And uh, it also has this matrix. Uh, the inner membrane is folded into those Christie's to increase surface area. And the matrix contains all the enzymes enabling aerobic cell respiration.